Hi everyone, and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. I see this mosquito bite might as well be like a lighthouse beacon. I should probably stop scratching it. So I wanted to do a video to give a bit of a bump and to help promote a video that Mark Bunker just uploaded. So if you're watching this right now, please go over to Mark Bunker's channel. It's just called Mark Bunker and subscribe to his channel and follow him on Twitter. His handle is at Xenu TV. So at X-E-N-U TV. If you subscribe to Mark on YouTube and you follow him on Twitter, you'll be able to follow all of the action about Mark's campaign. He's running for Clearwater City Council. To me, in my opinion, the heart and soul of Mark's campaign is all about being willing and able to call out the Church of Scientology for its bad behavior, both in general to its own members, as a member of the community. And to me, that is what separates Mark from all of the other candidates running for city council. And Mark is by no means a single issue candidate. Mark does not really have any interest in just being the anti-Scientology candidate. Mark wants to run to represent the people and to help give back to the people and to be a representative of the people. Mark really is all about government being of the people, by the people, for the people. And he wants to be a champion for the citizens of Clearwater, not just someone who's known as the anti-Scientology guy. So as much as Mark really does not want to be seen as a single issue candidate. I think because that is the thing that so differentiates him from every other candidate for city council. And because that is uh, the thing that Scientology really does want to do, they want, they're going to, they're going to try to pigeonhole Mark as being the anti-Scientology candidate, the bigoted candidate. And it's going to be really interesting to see what lengths they go to, to pigeonhole Mark with this identity. And again, even though Mark does not want to be seen as a single issue candidate, he is by no means going to start to soft pedal or back off of the position that he's taken over the last 20 years of trying to call Scientology out for its abusive practices and doing so in a very public manner. And so in that spirit, Mark appeared this week at a public meeting of the, and there's so many boards and committees in Clearwater, I really hope I get this right the Downtown Development Board. Now, in my previous videos where I've talked about politics in Clearwater, I've said something along the lines of, a Scientologist has never been elected to any office in this city, in this county, in this state. And there's one small exception, the Clearwater Downtown Development Board. And the reason why I've never included the fact that there are a bunch of Scientologists on this board is because they're not elected by the entire city. The Downtown Development Board uh, is a council of, I want to say 12 people, don't hold me to that, that are elected only by people who live in a, a very small defined area of what's considered downtown. You have to live there, or you have to have a business there, or you have to own property there. And again, don't hold me to this. We're talking like maybe 200 people. And even if it's more than 200, we're talking hundreds of people. We're not talking thousands of people. And in this voting block that consists of these downtown stakeholders, a really good percentage of those people are Scientologists to begin with. So it's not a real election in the sense that it's not a citywide election. And it's a stacked election in the sense that probably close to half of the people voting are already Scientologists. So it's a miracle everybody on this board isn't a Scientologist. And this development board does have influence. And it is a little ironic to think that the Church of Scientology's oppressive presence in downtown Clearwater is what most Clearwater citizens will point to as the reason why downtown is so dead and quiet and creepy a good percentage of the time. And yet the board that has been tasked with having some sort of a guiding hand in downtown development is stacked with Scientologists. So Mark went and spoke in front of this board this week. And there's some period, I think, just before the meeting happens or just at, before the meeting ends, where any member of the public can stand up and speak for three minutes. And that's exactly what Mark did. And he posed a fantastic question. He said, if the problem is Scientology, then are Scientologists the answer? And it was a great question. And the president of this board is a man named Paris Morphopoulos. The Morphopoulos family is well known in Scientology. I think all their kids went to Delphi and Paris has owned the one-stop shop, which has been 
in downtown Clearwater for decades. And all the Scientologists go to the one-stop shop to get all their supplies and their vitamins for auditing sessions and their hand cream and their little briefcases for OT7. All these things are sold at the one-stop shop. And Paris is the president of this board. And Mark Bunker got up there and he spoke briefly and he, he, he identified which members of the board were Scientologists. And he said, the only member of this board that I have a personal history with is, is Mr. Morphopolis. And so Mark uploaded a video of all of this to his channel. It's not very long, five, seven minutes. And in the video that he uploaded, after he identifies Paris Morphopolis, he edits in footage from several years back when Mark was still working for the Lisa McPherson Trust and was filming various uh, protests or events on the public sidewalks of Clearwater. And Paris Morphopolis is in his face saying shit like, oh, Mark, you're, uh, it looks like you're still, I got your 50 Twinkie a day habit going on. And then very quickly transitions from trying to heckle Mark about his, his diet or his weight to segueing into basically asking him if he likes to have sex with kids and animals. So I think it's only appropriate that someone who holds themselves up as a community leader, Paris Morphopolis, somebody who really tries to do this little song and a dance for the community, pretending like his identity as a Scientologist is wholly unrelated to his identity as a community leader or a business owner. As one of these guys who tries to pull the wool over people's eyes in Clearwater, that the Church of Scientology has only the community's best interests at heart, or no, it's not true at all that Scientologists are loyal to the Church of Scientology above anything else. I think it is only correct that Paris and everyone who works with him at this city level has an opportunity to see footage of this guy who just pretends to be, I'm just your average Joe Schmo. Scientology happens to be something that I do in my private life. It's got nothing to do with anything. I'm just me, I just represent my business. Paris, I'd like you to explain to everybody that you work with at this city level, what prompted you to confront a private citizen on a public sidewalk and accuse them of wanting to have sex with animals and children. And why do I think this is so significant? Because no normal individual just making decisions at their own personal level decides to go and do that. The Church of Scientology and the Office of Special Affairs recruits trusted public Scientologists to go out and heckle protesters or people with cameras or people who are picketing. Trusted Scientologists are literally called in by the Office of Special Affairs and they're told, this is who's outside, this is what they're doing, and this is what we have isolated as their buttons. This is what will make them angry if you say this. This is what will make them angry if you do this. And that is what, when you see Paris in this video, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the footage that Mark uploaded. That's why I want everyone to go subscribe to his channel, go follow him on Twitter, because I'm borrowing this footage to bring more exposure to his content and his channel. So if you're watching it here, go over there. So, uh, so I'm gonna borrow the footage, I'm gonna show it, and just realize when you see this happening, because there's a lot of videos out there on the internet where you see Scientologists doing this. They're doing it to bait the person into a reaction that will hopefully escalate to where the Scientologist can get the police involved and file charges or have the person arrested. That is why the heckling occurs. It's not done for any other reason. It's not just done to get under someone's skin. It's not done just to look like they're fighting back. They're trying to escalate the situation so that tempers flare and maybe some inadvertent contact is made so that Scientology can get the police involved file some sort of a complaint and have the person arrested. I want Paris to be able to explain to everyone he works with on a day-to-day -day basis and with the city and with the county and his other non-Scientologist business leaders that are on this council with him. Paris, what got you to go out on the public sidewalk that day and accuse Mark Bunker of wanting to have sex with animals and children. Please explain to everybody you work with how you are not just an instrument, you are not just a tool, a stooge 
of the Church of Scientology. Tell everyone you work with how you don't take orders from the Office of Special Affairs. Tell everyone that you work with how Scientology does not have the ultimate leverage against you. And at the end of the day, you're going to do whatever the hell the Church of Scientology tells you to do. Here's the footage. All right. And you said there was someone that wanted to address us, a citizen comment? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Mark Bunker. And uh, back in 2000, there was a citywide referendum when uh, the city was planning to give away the entire downtown district to an out-of-town developer for a dollar a year for 99 years. And before the, the citizens voted on that, the, the St. Pete Times at that point, ran an article that included a poll that was conducted that showed that 66% of the people who responded to the poll thought that redeveloping downtown would only benefit Scientology. And 100% of the people who uh, were polled said even if the downtown was redeveloped, they still wouldn't come downtown. And the reason was the presence of Scientology. Now we have a situation where the board is primarily made up of Scientologists. We've got Paris Morphopoulos, who's the president of the board, right? Uh, Stu Sowerman, is that correct? You pronounce it not Rainman, but Showerman. Showerman, okay, thank you, Stu. Uh, Ray Cassano. And Tom Wright. I, I'm not a Scientologist. You're not? No. Well, I've got, I've got you in the service completions here, Tom. There must be another Tom There is another Wright. Tom Wright, yes. Okay, I I'm apologize. Tom Wright. Okay. Uh, and then uh, also not a Scientologist, but Ms. Jano, uh, it does work for Scientology's go-to law firm of Johnson Pope. So we've got a, a very big balance toward Scientology's point of view. Now, the only one of you that I've run into before is, is Mr. Morphopoulos. Until you lose some weight, get the hell away from me. You know? Are you on your 50, 20 a day habit now, or what? If you can't control your eating habits, Mark, what about your sexual habits? What, what, where do they run to? Small children? Huh? Animals? What is it, small barnyard animals? What does it for you? Little boys? I told you I don't want to be videotaped by you. Then why approach me on a public street? Because I want you to get the hell out of here. I used to shop at his store, One Stop Shop, until he told me that I wasn't welcome there. Uh, I never created a scene. He just considered me his enemy. So that's Paris Morphopolis for you. Very religious family man out there heckling private parties on public sidewalks with, with trash like that. Now, a few minutes later in the video that Mark Bunker uploaded, you will see Scientologist Ray Cassano actually saying in public, at a public meeting, that he's a Scientologist, but he's also a Christian. And he goes beyond that. He actually says, and in fact, most Scientologists are Christians. What were you going to ask? Well, I am a Scientologist. Yes. I'm also a Christian. Most Scientologists are Christians. Right. <laughs> you know, on some level, maybe Ray's going to get a pat on the head for saying something like that. But I have to be totally honest. I think Ray's actually going to get in trouble for saying that. It is one thing to say uh, uh, Scientology is completely compatible with Christianity and you don't, you can be both. It's one thing to say that in a hypothetical sense. It's bullshit, but it's just, that's one level of bullshit. It's another thing for Ray Cassano to personally say he's a Christian. It is so far beyond all of that to say most Scientologists are Christians. Do you know what gets the Christian community more angry than anything else when it comes to Scientology? It's Scientology trying to convince people that you can be both a Christian and be a Scientologist. Almost nothing enrages the Christian community more than that. So keep going, Ray, you're doing a fantastic job. And I know for those of you watching this channel, you don't need to hear me say this, but let me just point out. It is even at the introductory level, there is no compatibility with Scientology and Christianity. To be a Christian, you have to believe in heaven. 
You have to believe that Jesus is the son of God and came down and died for our sins. And if you accept Jesus, you will go to the kingdom and heaven and the afterlife. Scientology, even at the introductory level, does not believe in a heaven or hell. And at the more advanced levels, L. Ron Hubbard says Jesus was a lover of young boys and that the entire concept of, of, a, of a, a Christian God or even a Jewish God or even a Muslim God are false concepts that are electronically implanted into our collective, uh, we'll say subconscious minds to keep us controlled and docile on planet earth so that we won't sort of wake up and realize that we're all here in a big prison. At the advanced levels, that is what Scientologists believe about religion. And at the introductory levels, Scientologists believe that you are an immortal spiritual being that lives forever. When you die this lifetime, you just zoom over to the local hospital maternity ward and jump into a new baby body and grow up all over again. It is so comical to see the length Scientologists and the Church of Scientology will go to to try to present this image of being compatible with Christianity. And as much as I want Paris to have the opportunity to explain to everybody he works with how he's not just a stooge of the Church of Scientology, I also want Ray to have an opportunity to explain to all of the Christians that he comes across and works with on a day-to-day -day basis how he's a Christian. I want people to start asking Ray Cassano when the last time he worshipped was. What his favorite Bible chapter and verse is. I want people to start asking Ray how his belief in Scientology-style reincarnation is consistent with his belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and died for our sins. Give it a shot, Ray. I'm sure you'll knock it out of the park. All right, so that's all I've got for now. While we're still talking about Mark Bunker's campaign, I'm doing everything I can to help Mark with his campaign. Mike Rinder said he's going to do everything he can. Leah has said she's going to do everything she can to help Mark with his campaign. There is one thing we still need, though, or I should say we still want because we don't actually have to have it. We really need a campaign manager. We don't have to have a campaign manager to move forward with a campaign. We have enough people willing to handle various parts of the campaign that we can just do it kind of loosey-goosey style if we have to. But it sure would make life easier to have someone who has at least run one campaign before, who's willing to come on board. It is a paid position. This is not a free volunteer position. Campaign manager is a paid position. The challenge in finding a campaign manager is finding someone who has at least done it before and is not afraid to put themselves on the radar of Scientology. Because let's be honest, anybody stepping up willing to be the actual campaign manager for Mark is going to be on Scientology's radar. So if you're watching this video and you have any experience running a campaign, or you know somebody who does, or you know somebody who knows somebody who does, let's use the power of networking to try to find somebody willing to come on board and make the commitment to this campaign. I mean, I do not see myself as a campaign manager. I sort of see myself as Mark's chief of staff. It sure would be nice to have someone else accepting like full responsibility for this thing. All right. Well, that is all I've got for now. Thanks for watching this whole thing. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 